Oh God, more snow. Must be time for an inside project again. Hey tubers, welcome back for another basement adventure. So many years ago, 25 or so, I got this power supply. It's one of those school power supplies, kind of built into a bench. And it appears to be broken. Let me show you what it does. So if you plug it in, this light turns on, it says switch on, SW on, though the switch appears to be turned off, but if you turn the power up, you get a whole lot of nothing on either the AC or the DC. I messed with the buttons, right? Just nothing comes on. So let's spend a few minutes doing some troubleshooting. One of the first things you want to make sure you do, you want to unplug it, right? Nobody wants to get lit up. Easy enough to take apart. One, two, three, four Phillips heads on the top. And if you look at the bottom, you only see three Phillips heads, which makes you wonder or know that somebody else has been in here already. So <clears throat> I got my handy dandy meter going and I started checking. So I have no voltage here, no voltage here. This is AC, that's DC, no voltage. So I figured that out pretty quickly. The next thing I did is this is the transformer that feeds the diodes that eventually comes out here. So I checked here and I have no <clears throat> low voltage. I don't have the AC. I don't have the DC. So thinking that's strange, I went back to the other side and I do have high voltage. That goes into this guy. Kind of interesting that they put the rheostat on the front end. That means you vary the AC voltage going into the transformer that steps it down. That eventually gives you the variable AC power here and the DC there. So they kind of put this on the front end. You could also tell that there's AC power because when you plug it in it turns on. So I made note of all that. Then I started looking at this and well they did some hacking here. But once again... I'm not happy that they bypassed this switch, and probably I'll put a toggle here. But there appears to be power coming into this, right? And nothing coming out of it. So I spent a few minutes and I drew a wiring diagram on this thing to kind of help me figure out what's wrong. So here is the wiring diagram. This is the AC when you plug it in. Then it goes to that thing. That thing is this on the bottom. So the power goes into that and comes out. The switch that's here, given that the light's on and I could see power here and here, right? I know that the electricity is making it to there. And I put a probe here on ground, the black one to ground, AC meter on AC, 200 volts. And I put the other probe here, and I got nothing. And I'm sliding this back and forth, and I got no, nothing going on into the rest of the circuit. So, given that I'm running this back and forth, these are the two yellows right here. I have no AC. And then as you go further down, you go through the bridge rectifier. That second transformer is actually a big inductor capacitor. I'm supposed to get DC out. So I messed around with this and slid it up and down and so forth. Right? This is the outer coil on the rheostat. Right? Basically one end of this is at ground and the other end of this or one end of this is at ground and the other end 
is at 120. So as you slide this wiper up and down at ground, you have no voltage going in here, AC voltage. And as you're up here, you have 120 AC voltage going in there. So anyway, I ran the wiper back and forth. Let me show you that. Right, so I moved that all over. And I got nothing. Then I started to poke around on this. And I realized that I had plenty of ground, but no matter where I was, I never got to 120 volts. So now comes the looking really closely, and let's see what's wrong with this. So this might be a little hard to show you, but if you look really closely, you can see that wire kind of hanging there. Right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it out a little more. Remember this picture? I'll bend it out. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. So I think you could see it. This piece of wire right here is broken. So that needs to go right to there. Right? So I need to connect this to that. And I need to do it in such a way that the wiper doesn't come up and smash into it. So I'm going to get out my soldering iron. I'm going to pre-wet this with a little bit of solder. And up here, then I'm going to run a little bridge up. Now, this is at 120 volts. So <laughs> you want to do it in such a way that it's not going to short to anything. By the way, when I took this apart, lying in this corner here was this loose bolt. So when they were messing around with the switch, they dropped that in. That's never good to do, because look how close you are to the bottom of the case here, right? That could short right here, and as a matter of fact, it could have even done that, which could have burned that out. So anyway, it just looks like a broken wire. But I'll resolder it, and hopefully this thing will come back to life. So I could have used the smallest soldering iron, soldering iron, but it looks like my repair was successful. You see how it's hooked up? And if I turn this around, right... You don't see anything moving, so hopefully I'm successful. I'm going to plug it in and we'll try it out. Okay, here we are. Lights on, power's plugged in, and if we turn her up, well, you guys see this? So, looks like uh, we got it fixed. I'm happy. Let's try the AC next. Okay, let's see if the AC works. Bang, nice. Um, 22 volts is enough to pop that bulb, so I'm not turning it all the way up, right? Next thing we need to do is fix the switch. But just quickly, this is a really nice power supply with that inductor there. The capacitor, that nice big capacitor they have in here, right there, right? Um, this power supply would be good for audio work. You won't be putting that 60 cycle hum into the circuit. So I'm really happy to see this thing come back to life. It's nice to do some fine work once in a while. Anyway, let's get to the switch and then go on from there. So if you follow the power in from the outside world comes into here okay I think a you know white the Sun is life uh, black dirt <laughs> death so so we got black and you see how they have a bypass they have oops they have the power hooked directly to everything so this black line needs to go to one side of a switch and the other guys need to go to the other side of the switch. So um, this switch is shot. 
Let's see if we can't find a bat switch or something to put in here. Okay, it's all wired up. And now let's just try it quick. There you go. I'm not going to risk a second time. Remember, this is hot. That wire's hot, and this is ground. So if you let those touch, you're going to get a little light show. Okay, so here we have it. Turn it on. Right, turn it up. Now, it seems trivial, but that is 0 to 16 with 2 amps. Once again, very nicely regulated, which is a good thing. This is 0 to 122 AC right here. Right? And then this guy is 120 volts, so you can plug directly into it. And this guy here is variable, 0 to 120 volts, only an amp and a half. So I'm thrilled. This is just really, really nice to have. And we're in, uh, we're in nice shape. Um, amp and a half, theoretically, I could do, what is that, about 180 watts. Probably anything over 100 watts is asking a lot of it. So... Couldn't be any happier. So, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch, comment, and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up. If the weather is bad, try to do a project or something down in the basement. Anything to make progress with your life, eh? Okay, take care now, folks. Bye.